Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Um, today I'm making a video which is part of series that um, involves creating a virtual environment. Some kind of like a sandbox that you can play around, you know, do your test labs, you know, um, deploy policies to see the outcome before you actually put them in the work environment. This is not very hard to do, but without lack of knowledge it could be so complex so this lab is going to be in series as i said our objective is to install a hyper-v server which we will use to install multiple other operating systems and use it to conduct labs some of the labs we will do will include installing an active directory server an ad replication group policy deployment for various for various things and some of the lab ideas will actually come from you the audience so talking about a virtual lab um like i said earlier why is it important to build your own virtual lab different people or we know have different reasons why they want to create their own virtual labs um, practicing of concepts before rolling it out the production that is one of the key things and also for learning and so much more for example you can have a server in the house that you can put multiple operating systems you can do your practices you can learn concepts you can watch YouTube and test it in there you can do all kinds of things with your own um, virtual lab you know, talking about this idea of virtual lab reminds me of when I first started my new job. Um, we had a goal to deploy Active Directory synchronization. So to me, it was like a very easy concept, you know, um, to deploy, you know. But unfortunately, without having to practice it on some kind of a virtual environment to see how the result will turn out, it made me to lock out everybody out of their emails on my first day of work. And that gave me a lot of sleepless nights. So talking about this idea, um, I see it's gonna be very, very helpful for a lot of people. And if people had known, I believe it's gonna save them from a lot and a lot of trouble. However, for the purpose of this lab, we're just going to create um, a bootable USB drive that we're going to be using to install the Hyper-V hypervisor. So to get the download for the Hyper-V hypervisor, you might have to go to this Microsoft website. Don't worry, I'm going to put that in the description. Um, you might also need to download Rufus, whichever version that you prefer. Um, but usually I like to download the latest version. So I'm going to download Rufus, the, the latest version, and I'm going to use that. Um, so, but the computer I'm going to use, it already have Rufus installed. But if you want to download the software, you're going to follow the steps, you know, um, in the video, you're going to see how I use the software and that's going to be very helpful for you. So I'm going to insert my 32 GB USB flash drive on the computer to allow me to um, create the bootable USB. So I'm gonna pull up Rufus. And uh, as you can see in the USB, so the Rufus version that I have is 3.75 uh, 3.75 version so I'm going to select the OS from the selection so I'm going to my USB um, sorry my uh, my look for my operating system and it's in my backup drive and uh, you see I have the Hyper-V hypervisor iOS and I also have the Windows Server 2016 as well so I'm going to be using the 2016 when I when I install the hypervisor and I'm changing the partition 
scheme to MBR because this is the oldest version and it works with pretty much most of hardware. Uh, the GPT is for the latest version. Uh, so this one is it works with the UEFI technology that's for the GPT so I selected that so remember when you select everything that you want like selecting the drive the operating system that you want to select for the iOS then you have to select the partition and if you click on start it's gonna let you know that it's gonna delete every single file that was already on the drive so it's just giving you a formatting warning so this is something that you have to buy well so we just have to wait now until the process completes so it's just time for me to chill and just observe the process let me fast forward it so that you can get to see how fast it went yeah it went all the way see i spent some time chilling and it's still going 27 percent 50 percent so still spending some time chilling just waiting for it patiently while rufus is doing his job uh, 92 percent so there so the rest of the process is just you know Rufus just doing his job to create the operating system for you so please remember the purpose of this drive is to assist me to do the installation on my server so while we wait for it to finish I can pull up the server that I have the version, the model of the server, and all of that information for you to have a look. Rufus is now like almost 99% complete. And uh, while we wait for Rufus to be done, I can now share my screen with you all to see the server that I'm going to install so you can see it's processing and it's 100% complete so this is done so at this point you can actually take out your drive and uh, and then insert it on your server to begin the installation process but also remember that I do have this is the server that I'm going to be installing it has a memory size of 32 GB and as you can see it has a system memory speed of 667 um, megahertz and i do also have the virtualization technology enabled please this is very important that if you do want to install any hypervisor make sure that the bios support Hyper-V technology, like so make sure that your virtualization is enabled and So this is very 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 important and uh, it also is 62 64-bit operating system uh, model 64 bits it supports this is this server support 64 bits operating systems. That's what that mean Yeah, so also Remember, how do you get into the setup? Remember when the server turns on and if you want to boot from the USB drive, you have to make sure you press F11. You see on the screen, you have to press F11 to select the boot menu. And once you receive the boot menu, then from there, you can go ahead to select your USB. You see, 2.20 gigahertz quad processor this is that server uh processor speed 32 gb of memory so this is way more than enough so we can get to host almost a lot of uh servers like because the minimum requirement for installing a server is you know for the windows 10 it's one gigahertz speed processor and then one gigabit gigabytes of RAM or the 32 and 
for 32 bits and then 2 gigabytes um, for 64 bit operations. So these are the basic requirements. And a hard drive of 16 gigabit, gigabytes for 32 bit and a 20 gigabyte for 64 bit. So these are the basic requirements that you need to install um, a Windows 10. For Windows Server, we need a processor of 1.4 G gigahertz uh, for a 64 bit processor and then 512 RAM and a disk space of minimum of what 32 GB. You know, you also need a network adapter, <coughs> but most of these things are not actually very important. But they're just telling you that in order for your things to work properly, you know, these are the minimum requirements <coughs> that you must have. So, on this note. I will say this is the end of this particular session. Remember, we are on a track to um, building our what virtual lab, and uh, it's important to let you all take you guys through the entire steps. Um, so, and I told you the importance of why we're doing this, um, just for to have a platform that we can practice, you know, and do things before we implement them. In our work environment and um, so and my resources I this is where I downloaded the the Hyper-V hypervisor is free for like especially for the Hyper-V technologies Hyper-V is free you can download the 22 of 2019 2016 versions um, for Rufus this is the site I'm gonna put all these in the description and uh, today as part of the first session we are doing preparing a bootable USB to install the um, Hyper-V server. So the next video is going to be a complete tutorial on how to do the installation of the operating system on our server. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.